Frankie's back, and it's time once again for Frankie's signature segment on this show. You knew he was such a breakout star, he had to have his own segment. One thing with Frankie Corrado, one thing that every Canadian NHL team needs to accomplish between now and, say, the start of the season. I think and that's my LinkedIn picture, actually, <laughs> that you guys use. Are you on LinkedIn? I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> I love that. Kevin Dayoff, also very likely on LinkedIn will very likely be one of the busiest GMs this summer. We know about the four players that are potentially out there. Who takes priority for you at this point? I feel bad for Kevin she Sheveldayoff at this point. He has a lot of work ahead of him, yeah. right? And Connor Hellebuck, it's been known that he's probably not going to sign an extension there. And that's the guy that fetches you the most in return. How can he not? I know the argument has been made recently about, oh, Aiden Hill won a Stanley Cup. Well, if you look at the team that got to the Stanley Cup yeah. finals, Sergei Bobrovsky, you can almost say, like, not single-handedly, but he was the main reason why they got there. So yeah. he can probably fetch you a return that can help set you up for the future. But it'll, it'll be interesting to see what direction the Jets go. Like, are they trying to stay relevant on the cusp of making the playoffs? Is it going to be something where they strip things down and, and look ahead to the future? Listen, I've, I've played in Winnipeg. I've spent time there throughout my career. The fans there, they're going to support that team. Oh, they yeah. are. They're, they're some of the most passionate fans in the league. And it's, it's hard to decide if there would be an appetite for it or not. But they do have pieces that they can take and keep their team relevant and in the realm of winning because there are some young pieces there that have a bright future ahead of them. Like Ehlers is a good player. Perfetti oh, yeah. is a good player. Josh Morrissey's coming off his best year. I think Rick Bonus is a fantastic coach. Like there are some things going for the Jets, but there's also some players going out the door as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, go it's going to be some sort of makeover. The question is how big is that makeover going to be? In Edmonton, you know, like every team's up against the cap, but as Ryan Rashog said on yesterday's show, the Oilers are really up against the cap. So what does Holland have to do to get this team over the top? More of what he's been doing, right? Like, I think Ken Holland's done a really nice job of adding depth scoring lower in the lineup. And some of that is going to have to come from within guys like Ryan McLeod. Maybe it's a Warren Fogle, but maybe there's some players outside of the organization. Nick Bukestad was a nice addition to that team. Can they keep him? Like, he's a bigger body that plays lower in the lineup and can help contribute on the score sheet. So as, as much as the top players seem to carry that team night in and night out, it's so good if you could have players that you could re rely on lower in the lineup that can give you some production. Like Connor Brown is a an intriguing name, right? Mm -hmm. Like he missed all of this year with an ACL injury. There's a, a, a past with Connor McDavid playing on the Erie Otters. That yep. seems like that would be a really good fit. And it's a guy that can play on your third line. He can play higher in the lineup. And you know, wherever you put him, you're going to get contributions from him night in and night out. So it's more of the same for Ken Holland. Now that's one thing, right? You obviously want to add a defenseman at some point, but you said this segment is called one thing. <laughs> I'm glad you're sticking to the rules, Frankie. Um, let's talk about Calgary. They have a new GM in Craig Conroy. Lots of Noah Hannafin talk, and then that Elias Lindholm extension looming. What do you want to see from Craig Conroy? If he could find a way to add speed into the lineup, that's what they need. Like, they're, they're a very good defensive team. They were under Sutter. I imagine they will still be a good defensive team. They have those pieces in place. So if you're looking outside of the organization, speed is the name of the game. But really, it needs to come from inside. It absolutely has. Jonathan Huberto needs to improve. He, he can't have the season he had. He, he doesn't need to be a 115-point player, but he needs to be productive. Nazem Kadri can have a better year. Coming off the year he had in Colorado, mm -hmm. there's room for him to improve. Like, all these guys that have been within the organization, they can play better and take this team where it needs to go. Jacob Markstrom is probably the most important because we know how important the goaltending position is. And we saw the nights that Markstrom played well. This team could put it together and they could win a close game. I mean, they lost a lot of close games, but there, there were times where you're like, there's the Markstrom of last year. It was just fewer and further between than, than you would like. But looking outside the organization has to be speed. They need to be a much faster team. At time, they were, they were slow with the way they moved the puck and they were slow with how they got to the puck. And as a former player, I feel like <laughs> you've played for Daryl Sutter for a couple of years. All of a sudden, you know, here comes Ryan Huska, and it's just a different attitude. That alone, right, has to just be a breath of fresh air through the whole saddle dome. It has to be. The communication is key. Yeah. And, you know, we're just living in a different era of players where you can be hard on players. You can be demanding. Like, I think players want that. I always said this. Like, players want to be coached yep. to a certain extent. They just don't want to be messed with, right? Yep. So they want to know exactly where they stand. There's always going to be a little bit of gray area, but be very direct. Tell them what they need to know and watch the players because I think the more you do that, the more you will get 
quality from the players and, and you'll see more production as the season goes on. Okay, let's talk about Vancouver, one of your former teams, and uh, already thin on defense. Then they buy out Oliver Ekman Larson, and poor Ethan Bear suffers an injury at the World Hockey Championship. So they're even thinner on defense. Is defense where Patrick Alvin needs to be looking? 100%. And they're they're not in a position like other teams. Like there's other teams around the league. You can say, oh, they need some depth defensemen. They don't need depth defensemen. They have plenty of guys that serve a purpose as as depth guys. They need top four guys. They need guys that can move the puck. And one thing watching the Vancouver Canucks play this year was so noticeable when they would go back to break out a puck. Everything seemed to just get stalled, mm -hmm. right? It took multiple attempts to get out of their zone. So the first thing you look at, okay, who are guys that can move the puck? Like Matt Dumba is a guy who's coming off a down year. He made six million last year. Like maybe that's a guy you, you bring in on a one year deal and say, listen, like, can you catapult your career here? while helping us for the time being and maybe it turns into something long term or John Klingberg yeah. another player like last year he signs a one year seven million dollar couldn't get the long term ticket that he was looking for and now you're looking at it, okay like is that a guy that can help move the puck out of our zone can he help offensively and Carson Soucy a guy for the Seattle Kraken yep. who I think is a really good defenseman very strong Had steady guy year. like those are the kind of the makeup of the players you're looking for in the top four we always talk about puck moving for sure but you want to play in the top four you absolutely have to be able to play against other teams' top lines. And uh, defensively, the, the Vancouver Canucks struggled. That's not just the defense. That's as a team, they struggled defensively. Um, John Klingberg, it's funny because halfway through last season, I thought, man, he's made a mistake. Now I think he's probably going to cash in this offseason. There's yeah. just not enough defensemen out yeah, there. Yeah, th th he'll have that going for him. Yeah. I, would, I would imagine teams would be reluctant to throw a lot of money and a lot of term at him coming yeah. off the, the season he had. I think like Klingberg and Dumba are, are almost in that same category where it's like, show us, you know, take a one-year show-me sure. deal. It'll be a decent amount of money and go from there and try and sign something long term. Well, we are less than a week away from the draft and of course uh, NHL free agency on July the 1st. Frank, are you excited free agent frenzy? Yeah. You'll be in that Studio 6. Ellen Pfeffer will be walking around with her camera on her head. Ellen's the best. I know, she's fantastic. She's on camera tonight. <laughs> Wonderful. She's doing a great job. Free agent frenzy, July the 1st. Dothy will be there. It begins at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Frankie, that was fun. Thanks, pal. Thank you. We will be back right after this, as Mike Francesa would say.